guys you welcome to my channel we are going to continue from where we stop uh still on optics practical all i'm just trying to do is for you to be sure of what you are about to do i get to where i'm coming from so either as a teacher or as a student now we stop at the point where we are looking at um, the the situation whereby a light ray traveling into a triangular prism whose uh, one of its angle is 60 degree like this so if the light is traveling into this triangular prism like this and uh, the angle is 60 degree we don't know theta one we don't know theta two so theta one is angle of incident theta two is angle of refraction and theta three is angle of um, incident because this ray incidented on this and theta 4 is angle of refraction so if this is 60 degree what will be the value of theta 4 that's the question so it's very easy for us to go about that because if i extend this line so let me extend this line like this that is the incident ray if i extend the line you get to see that it is parallel to BC. Can you see? So if I call this one N and I call this one, let me call it D, for example, line ND is what parallel to BC. Am I making sense now? Okay, so if that should be the case, definitely. This 60 degree is alternate to this place. I see it now. So here would also be what? 60 degree. If from here to this place, that is like this is 90 degree since this normal is at 90 degree so if here is 60 uh the theta one is going to be what 30 degree so we've gotten our theta one to be 30 degree we can now find theta two so to find theta two like i've explained earlier in the first video if you have not watched the part one of this video where we start the explanation of things that you need to know before going to the main practical here is the main practical that we are going to consider just immediately after this video that is after this explanation you are considering it immediately so if you have not watched it check the description you're going to find the link to the video there all right so for us to get uh, theta 2, we use Snell's law that states that the M1, that is refractive index of the medium where the light is coming from, is equal, uh, M1 sine of uh, theta 1 is equal to M2 sine of theta 2. How are you getting this now? So if this should be the case, what is N1? N1 is A, so definitely the refractive index is what? 1, then the sine of theta 1, which is 30 degree, equal N2. N2 is inside the glass, and the refractive index of the glass is 1.5 sine of theta 2. Okay, so sine theta 2, which is what we are looking for, is equal to 0 0.5, because 1 times sine of 30, sine of 30 is 0 0.5, divided by 1.5. So when you say 0 0.5 divided by 1.5, our result is going to be 0 0.333. Uh, and the 3 just continues like that. So let me just make it in for the smart place. So theta 2 is going to be the arc sign of 0 0.333. Are you getting this now? So by the time you take the arc sign of this, theta 2 is going to equal to 19. 0.47 so in degree so you can press your calculator to get that value am i making sense now all right so we can now find theta 3 now so for us to get theta 3 we need to uh consider the fact that if i extend this line here this line if i extend it it's going to be parallel to this line as well are you getting it now so if that should be the case, this angle here is alternate to this angle here. So theta 3 is the same thing as theta 3. Are you seeing it now? So I already know theta 2, so I can know theta 3. That is, I can know the angle of this place if I know this place. Why? Because from here to this place is 90 degree. 
then from here to this place should also be what 90 degree so if from here to this place is 90 degree and i know theta 2 therefore theta 3 is going to equal to theta 3 is going to equal to 90 minus theta 2 so 90 minus theta 2 is the same thing as saying 90 minus 19.47 so if you have that you are going to have that uh i say 90 sorry that will be 45 degree because yeah because uh, yeah that will be 45 degree yeah okay uh okay so wait i almost made a mistake here right now so if here is what um if here is angle theta uh directly opposite to this place is going to be what 30 degree as well can you see uh this vertically opposite angle okay so from here to this place is what is 90 degree because this is perpendicular line i isn't it now and uh, from here to this place also is going to be what uh 90 degree here. so from here to this place this place and this place they are vertically what opposite so if here is 30 degree then here is also what 30 degrees so if the entire year is 30 degree then this one is going to be what uh 30 30 minus uh, 19.47 are you getting it now so 30 minus uh 19.47 that will give us uh, theta 3 so how do we get what will be our value then um i'm actually not with calculator yes so let me just say 30 minus 19.47 so i have 47 here yeah? and this one is going to give us a uh, one and this one is just going to give us one also so theta 3 is going to be 11.47 so if i get my theta 3 now to be 11.47 then i get the value for this place do you understand that now so what will be theta 4 so we can as well get theta 4 how do we get theta 4 we get theta 4 by saying n3 sine of uh, theta 3 is equal to n4 sine of theta 4 are you getting this now so n3 is what is still in the glass that will be 1.5 uh, sine of um, 11.47 uh, equal n4 which is a and that is going to be one so you have one sine of theta four for that reason uh 1.5 sine uh 11.47 so we have that theta four is equal to arc sine of 1.5 sine of 11.47 so whatever result you have here is going to be the value for theta four i'm not with calculator here i would have done this so please note this very well this angle here is equals to this angle here vertically opposite angle and uh, since the summation of this place is 30 degree so if here is a certain value subtracted from 30 you get this one and uh, that's just that about the solution to the last problem we are looking at so what is the next thing that you need to know on the uh, things that you need to know before you start the experiment is the aspect of uh, um, total internal reflection now let's take for instance you know since morning what you have been considering is that uh, light traveling from a less dense medium to a denser medium now for total internal reflection to occur for total internal reflection to do what occur then there is need for you to consider a light traveling from a denser medium to a less dense medium that is from a medium with high refractive index to a read to a medium of low refractive uh, index for example a light traveling from glass to air or traveling from water to air just like the case that we have here so if you look at this now uh this uh this this medium this medium is air and this medium is uh, water so the refractive index of water is around 1.33 and the refractive index of air remains uh, 1. So if light is traveling from water to air, what will happen? The refracted ray is going to dive away from the normal. 
why is he diving away from the normal is diving away from the normal just because is coming from a medium with high refractive index and is going to a medium with low refractive uh, index so if it is that it's coming from a region with a, a medium of low refractive index to a medium of high refractive index then it's going to dive towards the normal i've explained that in part one so you can check the description to watch it if you are yet to all right so that's that's about that so coming down to this place now if I start increasing the angle of incidence, that is, if I start increasing theta 1, so as theta 1 is increasing, theta 2 would also start what? Increasing. Are you getting it now? So you can see, as theta 1 is increasing, theta 2 is increasing. So if I increase theta 1 to the point whereby theta 2 is now equal to 90 degree, I'll take it again. If I increase theta 1 to the point that theta 2 is now equal to what? 90 degree therefore theta one is going to become a critical angle i hope you understand that if i increase theta one to the point whereby theta two becomes 90 degree uh my theta one is going to be a critical angle so the critical angle is angle of incidence that makes what angle of refraction to be 90 degree so the angle of incidence when the angle of refraction is 90 degree is what we call critical angle and i hope you understand that all right so if i then increase the angle of incidence if i increase the angle of incidence more than the critical angle what will happen is that the the ray of light that is the refracted ray is going to leave the surface of the glass and come in completely inside the glass and that is what we refer to as total internal reflection is that taking now so when you increase the incident angle above the critical angle you are going to have the total internal reflection so examiner can ask you that what are the conditions for total internal reflection and i think i've told you that now you can easily bring that out the first condition is that light needs to travel from a denser medium to a less dense medium which is what you see here and the second is that there must be what the angle of incidence that is greater than the critical angle am i making sense now so i hope you get that clear all right now examiner can now tell you that okay if you are given a medium let's take for instance that you are inside the water and uh, you put on a torch light from water to what for the torch light to travel to the air now the examiner is now asking you that at what angle should you flash the torch light in water so that it's going to cause a total internal reflection that is you are looking for what should be the critical angle of the ray of light coming from water to what to form total internal reflection so for you to be able to get this it's very easy you just apply what the snell's law which is what you can see here so let's take for instance that m1 m1 is the medium where the light is traveling from which is water 1.33 and it's traveling to air which is m2 and is equals to what one so if i apply snell's law from here you can see now that m1 sine theta 1 equal m2 sine theta 2 1.33 uh, sine of the critical angle is equal to 1 sine 90 degree. So sine of the critical angle is just 1 divided by 1.33 since sine 90 is 1. So critical angle is arc sine of 1 divided by 1.33 and you just have this to be 48.8 degree. So if you fire the light such that the angle of incident is 48.8 degree, you are going to have what we call total internal reflection and that is how you are to attempt this particular question and i hope this is well understood and clear all right so an example of material that will always give you a total internal reflection is fiber optics and that is why it is used in communication so they use it to send what message from one station to another and that is why i think your first topic if not second topic in ss3 is fiber optics and laser so i'll be talking more about that in my subsequent video so if you have not subscribed to this channel kindly do that now like this video 
drop your comments and share within your friends why we just move down to the main practical so i welcome you once again to today's practical so let's look into it now optics okay so when you look at this now i want to understand the whole of the theoretical background of this now we want to practicalize this extensively now i will want you to pay maximum attention if time permits us we are going to plot the graph at the same time is that okay now so let's get started uh we are provided with um a triangular prism and uh what is it called a plane mirror now your plane mirror might not have this back are you getting this now if it does not have this back just like mine it's fine that is the essence of the rectangular slab that the examiner asks you to produce so that you can use it to support it at the back in order for this not to fall am i making sense all right so you need what a protractor and um you need a uh, optical pin okay so you know examiner asks you to provide a drawing board um but you know i must tell you using drawing board for this experiment can be tedious because all your pin can bend uh in the process are you getting it now so it's better that you make use of uh, a uh something like this if you can see you can see now so this is uh, a a carton so this carton now is very easy for the pin to poke inside it so don't dare to place your uh your your plain sheets on a plain paper that is on a plain table because it's not going to erect the pin properly i hope we make sense all right so how do we go about this experiment so i've told you several times that going about physics experiment is all about you reading one after the other so uh you can see the diagram so at every point in time your diagram must always look like this so let's go back to the question the question states that using the above diagram as a guide carry out the following experiment all right so we are using this diagram as a guide and uh, what's the first statement here the first statement states that place the equilateral triangle uh, okay place the equilateral triangular prism on the diagram paper the diagram paper means your a4 sheets or your drawing paper or anyone trace the outline abc of the prism okay so uh this is our triangular prism be careful the base of this triangular prism is not triangular so if you drop it like this and trace you're not tracing triangle so you need to drop it like this to trace and how do you trace i will advise you that you let your uh your prism comes to the center try as much as you can to plot at least either one on each paper but if your school did not provide enough paper like that then you can do what you can uh try as much as you can to have two on each paper don't have more than two on each paper because your work might be rough so what i do is that i target uh, the three anchor points i point them out so i don't trace it out because it's not going to need so i've targeted the three anchor points then i'll pick my ruler i actually am not with my mathematical set here so there are two things that i'm missing here uh, my t square and um, my ruler so i'll connect the three points be careful when you are connecting the three points so i'll have this now just like this and uh, connect this and this also okay just like this and uh, connect this just like this okay so this is fine so you can see now i have my triangle well drawn so if i place my equilateral prism on it again i have it at the exact position can you see that now all right so uh this access to label it abc now when you want to label abc b please don't label abstractly check your diagram and see where it is a where it is b and where it is c so can you see Okay, so i'm going to label it in that manner so i'll write this as a and this is what b and this is a c am i making sense now make sure your book is very neat if you are the type that sweat clean your hand very well are you getting this now make sure you are staying close to the window so that uh, uh, you can give room for more ventilation 
all right so we are done with the very first thing that they ask us to do you can see place the equilateral triangular glass glass prism on the diagram paper trace the outline a b c of the prism we've done that so go to roman figure two remove the prism which is what we have done draw a line no such that it makes an angle high equal 50 uh, 25 degree with the normal at point o on side a b all right so if you look at that now so we need to draw our normal first though i always advise you that you make use of your uh your t square because that one can give you exactly 90 degree am i making sense now but this one i'll just have to make sure that it is straight and uh, when you want to construct your normal make sure it is very closer to this angle a why you need to let it get closer to this angle a is that if you try start at this center here and the emergent ray start increasing if the emergent ray start increasing uh it might be taking you closer to this angle b and uh, that might alter your result so for that reason let it get closer to this very top here then you construct your 90 degree which is your normal so this is normal can you see now so from this normal now i'm going to what place my protector there so i'm placing my protector like this can you see the way i'm placing it so so that uh, the normal is going to be at a zero degree mark can you see this line here you can see that it is absolutely in line with my normal so i'm going to count what 25 right so this is zero here this is 10 this is 20 and uh, this will be 25 so i think you see that now so i'm going to connect this to this place so take your time and then um, rule all right so if i have this now definitely this angle here is 25 degrees so i can write 25 degree there no i, I i'm thinking if that somebody is about to ask me now that are we to make use of what pen or we have to make use of pencil uh i'm telling you categorically please use pencil but make sure that your pencil is well sharpened because if you make use of pen and you are not perfect enough you can make a mistake and that will make your book rough uh so i advise you make use of pencil is that taken now all right let's go on okay so uh we've done what they asked us to do right now we have mark angle what 25 degree uh with the normal point o on side a b so this is side a b and uh we have been able to do what exactly they ask us to do so we have to label this line as n because that's what it was on the diagram so n and then o so this is point o here okay absolutely good so what's the next thing so the next thing is to go to roman figure three can you see the way i'm taking it roman figure by roman figure so that's what you just want to do is that taken out so fix two pins r1 and r2 vertically on line no okay so that let's do that first let's do that first so we have to fix pin on this line so fix one here okay sorry make sure it is on that line and it is upright okay so fix one so pick the second one also make sure that there is a space between the first and the second Am I making sense? I think the camera should slant a bit, okay, so that they can see it clearly. Is that okay? Okay, so you see, let there be space between them, so like this, okay? So some might want to measure it. If you want to measure it, let it be at least two, um, two centimeters. So what's the next thing in the question? The next thing in the question is, okay, after you erect pin R1 and R2 vertically on line NO, replace the prism on its outline okay so let's do that replace the prism on the outline so make sure the prism is balanced on the outline all right so we have that okay all right so the prism is absolutely balanced on its outline now all right so that's cool so make sure it's balanced on its outline just like i have mine so what's the next thing they ask us to do here okay place the reflecting surface the reflecting surface is your plane mirror on the uh, sorry on the okay place the reflecting surface of the plane mirror in contact 
with phase AC of the prism. So where is phase AC of the prism? This side. So place this one there and make sure it's in contact with it like that. You can see. So I think uh, the camera should be uh, here. Okay. And uh, you can just slant a bit like this so that you can see what it looks like. Okay. Can you see the way it has been placed now? All right. So, okay. Um, I'm just doing this in my office. So it's fine. It's fine. Fine. All right. So what's the next thing? So the next thing is, um, okay. Looking through face BC of the prism, fix two other pins at three, at arrow three and arrow four, such that the pins appear to be uh, in a straight line with the images of the pins at arrow one and the uh, arrow two. You can see what this states now. This is the next thing to do. Now, if you look at it, they said, look at what? BC, that is, you are looking at the prism. You are not looking at the glass prism. It's very important to get that clear. You are not looking at the glass prism. You are looking through what? the prism. All right, so it's fine. So pick the other two pins and then, so you can see the way I want to view now. See the way I want to view, just note my viewing mode very well. And then I'm going to make sure that um, I'm standing well and then make sure that I place this one at the point where I see that it completely obstructs the two image so that it's in the same line with the two image before I erect it. Okay, so it's not well erect. So you have to be careful of this. So I'll look at it again. So please, okay. I think this is fine now. So I'm seeing just a single image now. And I'll do the same thing to this. So make sure your hand is not too close. Okay. So fix this. All right. So I have it like this now. Can you see what the setup looks like now? Okay. You can see what it looks like. So what's the next thing they ask us to do? Remove the prism, the mirror, and the pins draw a line to join point arrow four and the uh, arrow three. Okay, so we have to remove all of this. Okay, so I remove it now. So what's next thing after removing it? Okay, so draw a line to join point arrow four and arrow three. So we're joining these points right here. So you can see that even from the ruler, you see that. The points are straight. Okay. Can you see that now? So this is what? R1, R2, R3, and uh, R4. Can you see that now? Okay. Before I move on, don't forget to show the direction of your line. is very important. Very, very important. So we've done that. So what's the next thing? Okay. Produce line R4, R3 to meet line NO produced at T. Okay, so there's need for us to extend this line here. I send it now. So use a broken line. So you can use a broken line or a solid line, anyone. So I've extended that. Then I'm going to pick uh, line NO. So make sure you have this is line no here can you see can you see the line no please don't do like this don't do like this this is line no place your ruler on that line no make sure your ruler is perfectly on it can you see what i'm doing you make sure your ruler is perfect some people will want to do like this are you getting it now avoid that avoid that please so place the ruler like this make sure it's straight then make your broken line okay all right so can you see where they meet they met at this point here so this is marked the uh, theta can you see and this point here is point t okay so look at the diagram can you see what we have from the diagram okay so what else do we need to do okay so we just need to produce uh, this normal to this point here, okay? 
so just like this can you see so i have this to come like this are you seeing it now so the point at which this one touch this place are you seeing it now huh extend it downward but before i do that i'll create normal to this one because this light is traveling from down parts here okay so if the light is traveling from down part here and strike this place then it's striking it at normal make sure it is 90 degree to this point here can you see and this is what they call the emergent ray all right so trace this line here where this one is touching this prism here you know, take it down just like this okay so this point is labeled d okay can you see that now okay so you see the diagram we have and this it's absolutely what the same so um i don't think it's necessary so, so let's just go on what i want to do before is that i want to shade this side so that you know that this is the glass side but it's not necessary uh since the diagram already guide us so that is the first one so this is when i equal 25 degree so let's go to the second one when i is equal to 30 degree when i is equal to 30 degree okay so place place your prism there repeat the same thing like you did earlier repeat the same thing like you did earlier okay 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 so once you dot the three uh vertex like that connect them together with your ruler just like this repeat the same thing with this and uh, repeat the same thing with this okay so call this a b and c all right so there's something i always want you guys to maintain because uh, a lot of uh, teachers or students, we always overlook this thing. Uh, and uh, you might be having a result that is questionable. What's that thing? You see where you place your normal here? Can you see where you place your normal here? Maintain it at this point here also. So let me find what the value of this place would be. And this is the problem I'm having currently now. I'm not with any ruler here. So what I'm trying to say in essence is that whatever the lines from here to this place is are you getting it now let it be the same thing for this one also for the second one also am i making sense now okay so what i'm going to do to get that is that i'm going to place this here like this okay so and i'll use this to determine that of this okay so i'll just guess okay i think my normal should be here can you see so make sure it is perpendicular just like this okay so what's the next thing the next thing is that you can still go back to your question but i think i have the question on my head now so the quest the next thing is for me to place my protector here can you see the way i place my protector fine make sure it is in line with that uh, normal then you measure 30 degree so this is 30 degree here yeah? so 0 10 20 30 so this is 30 degree can you see that so connect this together with this okay make sure it is straight okay so bam so that's 30 degree uh this angle here is 30 degree can you see that now okay so what's the next thing the next thing is that you place your pin here okay so place this second one also i send this now so when you place the second one what next replace the prism okay so make sure the prism is balanced on the outline then make sure your plain glass is on this also then you pick what the other pin and uh, view through the base bc and make sure that you are placing it where you are only seeing one image so this my image is not upright 
okay so you try as much as you can make sure your image is upright okay so i have this absolutely awesome okay so i'll pick the second one also and uh, make sure that they are both on the straight line just like this cool all right so you see now remove it and then you pick your pencil again and connect the points so just like this all right so you can see so here yeah, now make sure you have a very straight line here so we send this now so connect this line now make sure the line is very straight and extend it to point t okay so make sure you place this here also on a straight line just like this make sure it's straight make sure it's straight very important so trace this down can you see to this point here so you have here the be theta can you see so this is point t and this is point d this is r4 this is r3 this is r1 this is r2 and then your arrow make sure you show it so the light is traveling like this and uh, what next so you have um, okay you have this line here like this correct so make sure you show your arrow and uh, this one is coming like this you know this is very similar to the last example i solved with us when we are dealing with uh, the theoretical part of this topic so have this here okay so you can see this now and have this here okay 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 i'm i'm confused also uh, i think there's an error with this arrow from the examiner but i really do not know i really do not know i don't want to go into that now because i felt that this arrow should be facing down i got to this now but just go strictly with whatever examiner give to you i really don't want to brainstorm much on this because if you look at this way here this is an exit way yeah and i i think I'm, I'll, I'll just say this is an exit way are you getting it now uh this is what in boundary this way is coming in when it's coming is strike this one then this one strike this one are you getting this now then this one what come outside this is supposed to be like this, this arrow is supposed to fit somewhere else so i guess the diagram um where i formed this question from is wrong so i believe why i could not do such so let's just go with the diagram is that it you know, i think i've explained that now because i know somebody that has understand what i've been explaining saying is about to ask that so here is angle of emergence so you see we have practicalized the two right now so i'm going to fast forward this video right now so that i can get the remaining three done then when i'm done with the fifth one we come back and uh, we measure this angle and plot graph all right so we are done with the five of the experiments now so what's the next thing to do after you're done with your five uh, five experiments the next thing is to measure your angle so but before then let's look at what the question states after repeating the experiment uh four more times then the question states that the corresponding value of theta and e tabulate your readings so that means we are going to tabulate our readings so how do we tabulate our readings so it means you are going to have a table a table like this make sure your table is very neat very very neat okay so i discover that some students just memorize uh, whatever readings they see online please the question might change it's not exactly the same just make sure you do your own so this is uh, the serial number then the i in degree just put your degree here eh? or you can put slash degree then we have uh, 
the angle of emergence in degree also or you can just put degree here anyone and we have the theta in degree or you put your degree here anyhow am i making sense now so you put the experiment five times one two three four five remember like i always said you must not shade this table no part of the table should be shade so for the value given to you directly in the question you put it in one decimal place so we uh we started with 25.0 we st then we have 30.0 then we have um 35.0 then we have uh, 40.0 then we have uh, 45.0 okay so how do we measure our angle of emergence so you come for the first one so i'm trying to let this video short so um I'm not going to be plotting graph uh, you can check the description if you can find you'll find a link to how to plot graph there so for you to get your angle of uh, emergence all you just needs to do is to pick your what's it called pick your protractor so when you pick your protractor like this this is uh this this 90 degree place this there make sure that this 90 degree is in the same line with the base of the prism. Are you getting it now? Okay. So make sure you place this appropriately. Okay. So you can see this one is in line with the 90 degree that I have here. And this one is in line with this base here. So we read. So this is 20. Can you see? Like come on a bit. So this is 20 and uh, this is uh, 21, 22, 23. So that means my angle of emergence is 23. So I'll record this as 23.00 because I'm the one picking the reading. So the next one, you place for the second, oh, sorry, for theta of this one. So place this line place it on this straight one make sure you have this one at the center here and this one should be on this very straight one like this because this used to be the problem so if we have this like this now so this is point of zero now can you see this line that you extend is point zero so you read down to this place so if you look at it now you have what 85 for the value of theta <clears throat> so theta is what theta is going to be 85.00 okay so you're done with the very first one then go to the second one which is the 30 degree you place your protractor there again like this at 90 degree so make sure they are in line like this can you see so you want to read the angle from this normal to where you have your um, arrow for so make sure they are on a straight line just like that so and if you look at this now carefully make sure it's perfectly on the straight line so if you look at this now you see where it is this is around 20 29 or sorry yeah that's 29 can you see 29 so our angle of emergence is 29.00 can you see okay so um then you measure your theta <clears throat> so once you measure this now place this here make sure it's on a straight line with this and uh, this center is at here okay so you have this so make sure the 90 degree okay, sorry make sure the 90 degree is this point here on the so like this and make sure this one is on a straight line Okay, just like this now. Awesome. Okay. Okay, awesome. 
all right so <clears throat> when we read this now this is going to be um this is 90 and if you look at this now this is a uh, 96 can you see okay i think it's blow so can you see that's 96 so this will be 96.00 so if you look at it now you see that as your emergent angle is increasing your theta is also increasing so though if not for experimental error this our angle of emergence supposed to be the same thing as our angle of incidence with the look of things from the theoretical part and i'm going to show you that now look at this question here when the ray of light comes in from a and then it exits from a theta one is equal to theta four you can see are you getting that now so also if you look at this now we're supposed to have the same thing this is uh theta one and uh this is theta two here so this one is from the air and coming out to the air back from the glass is supposed to have this angle equal to this angle are you getting it now so but experimental error is allowed are you getting it now so you don't need to if you carry out your calculation that is mathematically like we have explained before you should have uh, the same thing and by the time you count the angle between this and this you should have this angle because all these have been explained while we are dealing with this all these questions here can you see but please you can take the camera up a bit okay so you see where we have this place strike at what 60 degree you see what we have here the angle we have here i send it now it's what the same thing that we are looking for in this question which is uh, the angle between the inbound ray and the exit uh, ray so you can watch uh, what's it called the uh, part one of this video that is where i explain everything about the theoretical part so that you understand how to go about the experiment and uh, what to fix so that is how to get your emergence ray and your theta so you just note this pattern and uh, you plot your graph so if you don't know how to plot graph you can let me know in the comment section just check the description yes i've answered you there you find a link to how to plot a physics graph there then you can plot your graph and see you guys in electricity class